Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it's Cody Carpenter here from the YouTube channel Cody Knowles. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, smack that subscribe button and that notification bell to stay up to date with all my future videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a conversion objective campaign using Facebook ads for affiliate marketing campaigns. So the conversion objective is how I run the uh, vast majority of my campaigns. And by choosing the conversion objective, you are telling Facebook to show your ads to people most likely to take valuable actions like making a purchase or adding in payment info on your website, app, or in Messenger. So you'll need to have a pixel place in order to tell Facebook what to optimize for. So some offers allow pixel placement. Example, if you're promoting an auto loan offer that allows pixel placement, you can set the purchase or complete registration pixel on the offer. And to do this, you would just reach out to your affiliate manager and say, hey, I noticed that this offer allows pixel placement. Here's my pixel. Can you um, send it to the offer owner and place the pixel on their thank you page? And that's as simple as it is. But if the offer you're promoting does not allow pixel placement, then you can alternatively use a blank redirect page to track leads, for example. And I just created a video on this in the previous video. So you can watch that by clicking that I button up there on how to use redirect pages with Facebook ads and affiliate marketing. Um, that is a super advanced video and I'm giving it away for free. So make sure to watch that. So now I'll show you how to create a conversion objective Facebook ads campaign. I'll dive into that right now. So here I am inside of one of my test ad accounts. I actually used um, this ad account to set up example campaigns inside of the 4S affiliate um, course. Um, that's this course right here, 12 modules, 80 plus lessons so far, adding more as we go. And then one thing I wanted to point out, look at this one. I set up a live auto campaign for you. And this one was an opt-in example. And early on into running it, we got 71 link clicks, 56 landing page views and 33 leads. So we got 56 people to show up on our opt-in landing page. And of that, 33 people gave us their email. So if we do a little math right here, 33 divided by 56, that is a 58% opt-in rate. So that is just crazy. The cost per email was $2.50. And I showed you that in a live campaign setup. So that's very exciting stuff. But anyways, let's get into creating a conversion objective campaign. The first thing you got to do is just come over here and click on conversion and then um, name your campaign. They say that this is optional. All right. So I named my campaign. I'm not going to name any of the ad sets or ads yet. I'm going to do that as I go. So I'll click on continue. So in this example, if we are running an auto loan offer, we would have to choose on to the special ad category. If you want to learn more about special ad categories, you can click that I button up there and watch a video where I show you what types of offers you need to have included in the special ad category. Otherwise your campaign will get disapproved. So I'd click on and then no categories declared. I'd click on credit and then I'd click off. And then it says um, some of the ad sets in this campaign do not comply with the requirements. You can click on update ad sets and then you could just click modify. I don't know why that was there. Like I just got into creating this ad set, but anyways, we can get into it. You can optionally a B test your campaign campaign budget optimization. So with this Facebook will distribute you your budget across ad sets to get more results, depending on your delivery optimization choices and bid strategy. And then you can control the, spending on each ad set if you want. So this isn't required anymore. There was a time where Facebook thought that it was gonna be required for people to do CBO campaigns, but I think they changed their mind and now you have the option to do on or off. When I'm doing uh, campaigns in the special ad category, I like to have CBO turned on because the targeting so limited where I'm usually only running like two to four ad sets at a time, just because we can't split test age or gender and then we can't do behaviors or demographics when we're doing our targeting for special ad category campaigns. So I only run a very, like a very few amount of um, ad sets. So sometimes I'll leave CBO on, sometimes I won't, but with uh, special ad categories, I like to leave it on daily budget. This is just an example. So I'll leave it ad scheduling, run ads all the time. So now I'd create my ad set. So I'd label it um, example ad set and then conversion right here. Conversion event location, it's gonna be on our website because in the previous videos, I showed you how to set up the lead on the redirect page. So what I would do is I would come and choose the conversion event that I want Facebook to optimize for. So I'd come down here and I'd choose lead. So I got lead picked from the drop down menu 
and then they'll give you your estimated daily results etc based on seven day click and one day view conversion windows all right next so dynamic creatives you can turn that on i think in the future i'm going to do a full video on how to create dynamic creative ads and have facebook automatically split test anywhere from like five to ten images a whole bunch of headlines uh, descriptions ad text call to actions etc like this is super powerful stuff and i use the facebook dynamic creative a lot for my campaigns now because it saves you so much time and facebook is so smart that they're gonna just do the split testing for you and they're gonna use that pixel data to see oh this ad is performing really well i'm gonna give this ad the most the majority of the impressions with this headline and this call to action and this description you know so to do that you would just click on and then continue but this is an example so i won't uh, start date i like to start these the next day um at 12:01 a.m because let's say it gets approved in like two hours then tomorrow at 12:01 a.m it will have the full day to let facebook evenly distribute out the impressions and stuff like that so you don't want to start campaigns too late in the day especially if you're starting out with a bigger budget because like if you started a campaign at 11 p.m and you have your daily budget at 200 and it gets approved right away facebook will try to spend that 200 bucks within one hour of it being approved so i like to do the 1201 that's totally up to you though so for audiences you can't do like look-alike audiences but you could do special ad category audiences and that's basically the same as look-alike audiences but they don't use like age or gender or like zip codes or anything like that because that's considered discriminating locations us i couldn't change the age even if i wanted to so that's one of the kind of it's kind of a downfall with the special ad categories you can't mess with age or gender then detail targeting so you used to be able to do demographics interests or behaviors but now if you click on browse you can only choose from a, a limited list of interests um so like i would type in um car you could do like car dealership or um, let's go financing. Where's the, there? Oh, car finance right here. So that's a really good interest to target if you're running auto loans. Car finance, big audience. Um, I've been having success with that. Then you'd want to choose your language. For me, I do English, US. And uh, for placements, you can do automatic placements. So if I was actually setting up a campaign, I'd have the Facebook Dynamic Creative turned on. And with having that on, I would also have automatic placements. So then I'm let I'm not only letting Facebook test out a whole bunch of ad images, ad headlines, ad descriptions, call to actions. I'm also letting Facebook go out and find the best placements for them to get me the lowest cost results for my leads. So I love leaving it on that. But you could also do manual, like if you just wanted to do the Facebook news feed, which is where the majority of the traffic will come from, most likely. Um, Facebook and Instagram feeds are where I've been getting the majority of my traffic, but you could just do Facebook news feeds uh, Let me just you would deselect everything and then yeah by deselecting everything Then you would just have Facebook show your ads on the news feed and that's totally fine But I like to have automatic placements turned on so for cost controls I like to let Facebook determine when to spend a little more on the bids just because I believe that Facebook is a lot smarter than I am And I like to have them do all the optimization for me. So I don't do cost controls. You can um, Conversion window seven days after clicking or one day after viewing if I'm doing a simple like lead gen offer, I like to test out one day click review. And that's something that you can split in your ad tests or your ad sets too. Like you can have an ad set set up for one day click review. And then once it gets like approved and stuff, you could duplicate it and have the same audience targeting and stuff and do seven day click review and see which ad set is the best. But one day click review for simple lead gen offers, I like to have it as that. And I've tested that a lot. When you get in charge impressions next, the potential reach was 880,000, so that's pretty good. So now we're on the ad level, and then right here is where you would just start creating your ads. You could do a single image or video, a carousel, or a collection. Then you could add in your primary text, headline, description, destination, so your website, and this would be where we would paste in our website. Display link is optional, call to action, I'd probably do like apply now. If I'm doing auto loan offers, I've tested that call to action a lot. That works better than learn more. Um, languages, 
and then uh, conversion tracking is below. So this is how it looks if you're not using the dynamic creative, but if you were using a dynamic creative, they would have, they'd have a spot to enter in anywhere from like two to 10 different images for you to split test or have Facebook split test for you. And then like right here where it says primary text, you could add more options. Oh, I thought I had a uh, dynamic creative turned off, but you could still add in other options and have Facebook split test for you. Maybe I did turn it back on. No, I didn't think I did. So I guess you still can add in more options even though the dynamic placement isn't turned on. I don't know if you can add in more video or uh, pictures or anything. But anyways, this is where you just fill in all your ad stuff and then you would hit publish and that's how you set up a conversion campaign with Facebook ads and affiliate marketing. This was just a simple setup because I'm obviously not running a campaign right now. I just wanted to show you how to choose the conversion op objective when you're creating your campaign and then in the ad set level to tell Facebook which event that you would like Facebook to try to optimize for to get the lowest cost results for like in our case leads. They'll go and split test a whole bunch of different placements and if we have dynamic creatives turned on a whole bunch of different ads, ad images, headlines, descriptions, call to actions, etc. And then do a whole bunch of testing for you to try to get the lowest cost leads possible. And then the longer you run the campaign the more pixel data you're feeding Facebook and the better your campaign will do. So that is how you set up conversion campaigns with Facebook ads. So thank you for watching this video on how to set up conversion objective campaigns using Facebook ads with affiliate marketing offers. If you got some value, make sure to like this video, comment if you have any questions or concerns, and lastly, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to stay up to date with all my future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.